In this presentation, we will <coughs> discuss how to use frequency response function models of coupled systems. So, in this case, we can come back to this picture, as, which we have looked at before. So, we can uh, um, view the acoustic system of this car con as a con combination of two linear systems with represented by two frequency response functions. The first system uh, couples the external <coughs> uh, excitation forces from wheel road um, coupling for instance and also drive line car body contact. Uh, two uh, the velocities, vibration velocities observed on the internal surfaces in the um, cabin, car cabin. And the second system uh, couples the uh, uh, vibration velocities on the surfaces to sound pressure measured in the position of the ears of the driver and passengers. So how shall we in principle combine these two frequency response function models to, uh, to obtain a single frequency response function model that can be used to simulate the sound pressure measured in driver's position and passenger's position. So let's start with uh, having a look at two isolated systems. A system one represented by its um, passive parameters h1 frequency response function h1 and the second system represented by its passive properties in terms of its frequency response function matrix matrix h2 so what happens then if we wish to combine to couple these two systems in a set of points like this. <clears throat> well, the ultimate question, of course, is if there is a well, simple frequency response function model that represents the coupled system that we can derive from the isolated system properties. And the answer is, of course, that there is yes. So, to start with, how do you do that? Well, let's start with the models for the uncoupled systems. For system one, we have this passive model. And system two, we have the same analogous model for the passive system properties. And if we now want to couple the system, then we have to introduce some coupling conditions. And these can, of course, be quite general as far as, as long as they are linear. And to simplify the method methodology, we assume now that we have ideal non-slip coupling. That is, they are in the coupling points in the coupling point, the systems are firmly coupled without any friction or um, uh, slip involved. And that means that First of all, the velocity or displacement in the coupling points must be continuous. That is, the coupling point in system one must the velocity or deformation in uh, uh, the coupling points in system one must be equal to the deformation uh, or velocity in the coupling points of system two. Secondly there must be force balance in the coupling points. So there can be no uh, <clears throat> um, resulting force in the coupling points because, because of physical reasons. So if we interpret this graphically now, so let's start uh, now with the um, uncoupled systems, uncoupled subsystems. So, assume now that we want to introduce one single coupling point here. 
and what we do then is that we have to require force balance and continuous velocity in these cut points here. So first of all continuous velocity means that this point belonging to the first system and this point belongs to the second system. In these two points the velocities or def deformation, displacement, must be equal, both in size and direction. Force balance means that in the cut point, the forces must be equal in size, but opposite in magnitude, in, in direction, sorry. So that is the um, coupling conditions in a single coupling point. So if we now introduce all coupling points, we get uh, vectors, the force balance, the, the force vector, contact force vector must be equal in size and opposite in direction. And the coupling point of velocity must be equal in size and equal in direction. So those are the coupling conditions. So if we summarize now, <clears throat> we have to start with um, the, the uh, equations characterizing the uncoupled subsystems. And then we have the coupling conditions. And together, these equations with known system parameters, H1 and H2, the frequency response function matrices, is actually a linear system of equations. And if the external forces are known, then this is a linear system of equations for the unknown coupling velocities and coupling forces. Now, if we generalize this and introduce internal sources in both um, subsystems, we can do exactly the same thing we simply have to add the contribution from the internal sources. So the uncoupled systems are characterized with these equations. The boundary conditions introduce like uh, these coupling conditions, coupling velocities and coupling forces. And these equations, like before, constitutes a uh, linear system equations and if the system parameters the uh, source strength vectors and the frequency response function matrices are known together with the ex external exciting forces then we can solve this system for the unknown coupling uh, velocities and forces and then finally calculate the uh, free vibration velocity vectors.